All right, so in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing a couple of things that I have done recently for a show, a uh, belly dance show that was geek themed called Geekgasm at the Skinny Dip. And uh, there were a couple of Star Wars things, and I had some Star Wars tricks of things that I've done before, so I figured I would uh, show them, show what I do to achieve them at least. All right, so there's the end result of one of the ones that had a plastic lightsaber and I decided to make the lightsaber realistic. Here's the original shot and I'm gonna show you how I did that. Alright, so using the original um, obviously I made it a little bit bigger I duplicated the layer and then I free transformed it brought it a little bit more up to size to fit better in the frame then using the brush tool with black and a fairly large brush size. I went in with 100% black and basically just kind of wipe out the background. Kind of get around Darth as much as you can there. Alright, so you can take a lot of time and really clean that up. I'm just going to kind of make a fast thing of it. Grab the bucket tool and hit it with some black. So that way it basically eliminates all of the black surrounding areas. Okay. <coughs> so using this, um, you want to go up and select a brand new layer, an empty layer. And then over here, you want to select your pen tool. Now on your new layer, select around either the top or the bottom where you want the lightsaber to start. Click one point down there and then go up towards the end, try and remain about the middle as much as possible like you were at the bottom. So that way you're basically making a somewhat straight line. Alright, now you want to go to your brush and this is where it's really important as far as sizing goes. Sometimes I'll go back over and see how big the brush circle is compared to the lightsaber to get it fairly close. You want to have the hardness all the way down, make it a very, very soft brush at 100%. And the color, depending on the lightsaber you want, for this one it'll be red. So I'll go all the way to the red, select a nice bright red. Go back to the pen tool, make sure it is active, and then you want to right click and go to stroke path. Now when it asks you brush, you say yes, click OK, we'll do one pass of red. And then I usually do two. You can do however many you want to, but I find that two works really well. So it may not look like it's something exceptional right now, but the trick here is that we go and go to back to the brush tool. And for your size, you want to make it about half of the size that you had for the red. And you want to select all white this time. I have to go back, select the pen tool again, and then right click and stroke path. And I would do it twice, same as I do for most of the things that I do. All right, and for the very end, you want to go back, right click, and then say delete path for your pen tool. And there you have a lightsaber. Sometimes I'll go back in with the um, eraser tool around the very, very bottom of the uh, lightsaber blade, if you want to call it that and just try and touch it up so it matches as much as possible with the um, original or the you know the actual picture of the lightsaber but you can make it glow more you know you can pretty much make it however you want to and with this um, tool with the layer active um, you can if you say you messed it up and the the pen tool isn't exactly in line or it's not quite right you don't have to go back and start over you can just go to free transform and try and line it up a little bit better, maybe move it around, make it a little bit longer, maybe you want a thicker lightsaber, then I would suggest making it smaller and thicker. And then you can rearrange that and set that back in however you would like in the picture. Alright, so that's that. Um, the other thing I want to show is, so this is um, a performance that was for the same, uh, basically the same duo, 
Darth Vader and this is the Emperor. And what I decided to do with this, because it's absolutely perfect for it, is to create some lightning and throw some lightning in the picture so that the Emperor is actually throwing lightning. <coughs> so first thing you want to do is duplicate the layer. And as much as I like the comp, I think, I think it would look better slightly sized up a little bit bigger and I want to move her all the way to the left so there's more room for the lightning to fly around so then using the brush tool and a 100% solid black I am going to go back in again and do like I normally do and erase the background get rid of the skinny dip lady and maybe even some of the uh, blue blue curtain I definitely want to go back over to the far right so that I can get rid of the duplicate picture as much as possible. Just make a nice solid black so it eliminates anything that would be distracting. Plus the picture was taken in fairly low light so there's a lot of noise in the picture. Which isn't as big a deal as it used to be to me. I actually like a little bit of noise in pictures now. It kind of, I don't know, it adds a texture and an element to it. But when I'm trying to black stuff out, I figured I might as well just get rid of the noise as much as possible from the background. I'm still going to have it on the performer themselves, but that's alright. I don't I don't mind that. Alright, so I'm just going in and touching up all the little blue elements that are still kind of hanging around her outfit. Some of it's just spill light from the stage lights, and some of it's curtains in the background. So I'll just go around and try and, as much as possible, as clean as possible, touch up around there so there's no random elements sticking out. And then I'll grab the bucket tool and just blast some black in there. Looks like I have just a little bit more up here that didn't get eliminated. Alright, so that's pretty good as far as the image goes. Now in the past when I've done lightning, I had to do it all by hand. Thankfully I found a program called Alien Skin uh, Xenofx 2 is what it's called. And they actually have a... Uh, uh, generator for lightning and shattering and images and dust and things like that so I use that a lot more now just to save a ton of time so what I want to do here is a brand new layer and then I'll go in and grab alien skin lightning and most of the time I prefer having red lightning that's just me but since we are doing the Emperor and if you want to be correct to the Star Wars uh, the Emperor throws blue lightning. So in here you can adjust your arc thickness, um, random, the branching, the branching spread, how jagged it is. So I want to have it pretty jagged and I'm gonna make the arc thickness at about 25. The branching I can probably bring down a little bit. I don't want to go in quite crazy. As crazy. All right, so I like that, so I'll click OK. Basically, it's adding into a new layer, a bolt of lightning. So with this, I will duplicate the layer two or three times. And then I'm going to make another layer of a different um, style of lightning. Go in and make two different kinds, and then we can warp and transform them, as you will see. Alright, so this one I want to make a little bit different from the last one as much as possible. That way it does look like they're random bolts. This one I'm going to have the branching be a little bit crazier. And the spread maybe less, but put the jaggedness way up. Alright, that's different enough from the last one that I think they'll fit in nicely. All right, so I'm going to hide that one for a minute. So I've got three different layers here of the original lightning. So I'm going to start grabbing and transforming them with the free transform option. And I normally try and line lightning and things up kind of to the fingers. Seems to generate from palms and fingers for the most part, but I like the uh, I like the look of coming from the fingertips. It looks a lot more like I don't know, it just looks cooler. So I'll rearrange the different lightning bolts. 
kind of attach them to thumbs and fingers and things like that. You don't have to get it perfect, you just want it sort of close because you can transform each of these as much as you would like. Alright, for this last one, I'm going to flip him upside down and make it fairly large. Place it back in there near the palm. Alright, now with this, I am going to select the Transform Warp Tool, and it'll give you a little box where you can pull and manipulate the lightning to make it thicker or, you know, stretch farther down. Maybe the origin is slightly different as far as where it's coming from. And that looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to leave those three alone as they are. Now I'm going to go back up and turn on the second lightning layer, and I'm going to do the same thing with this as far as duplicating. I'm going to duplicate two more layers off of it and then I'm going to grab and free transform them and match them up to various parts on the right hand left hand in the picture but her right hand in real life and match them up to various parts that I want them to connect to and spin off of and I can free transform all day if I want to I can also warp each of these individually if I don't like the way one particular one looks or if it's too close to another one. This one I'm going to make a little bit larger and put that off of the fingers that are right underneath her chin. Okay, so that one is good as it is. I can just go in and I want to grab the warp tool, transform, warp, and I'm going to angle that bit of the lightning towards her finger a little bit. And make it come down there a little bit wider. Sort of running into each other as far as the bolts come out. Alright, so with the brush tool, one of the things that I would do normally is grab a fairly large soft brush and I like going back in with about a 50, maybe 60% opacity brush and just lightly touching up around where the lightning strikes are originating to give a little bit more of that feeling of flash. Feeling like there's actual light coming from there. It's kind of hard because you're dealing with shadows and lights that were pre-existing as far as the performance. But that does help almost look like it's so bright that it just makes a flare or a blur. So a new layer will be one of the last things I do. Make a brand new layer and then I'm going to go in with the pen tool and a blue selected. And what I'm going to do is make the layer a vivid light layer and the brush will be normal at about a 25 percent opacity and then I will just slightly come in here and maybe 20 is better 20 percent opacity and I will just touch up around the face around the brows and stuff this is just to get the idea that there is blue lighting coming from the bolts just helps kind of add to the scene a little bit. And you can do a lot of this or you can do only a little bit of it. I tend to like doing touches of color just to help sell an image. I think I've got a little bit too much on the face there so what I'm going to do is get a eraser brush and go back in and just slightly erase around some of the elements that are just a little too blue for me. Don't want to make it look like she got blue in her face. Just a little bit of lighting coming from the, the bolts. Alright, now I'm going to go and select the last, or the first three actually, first three lightning bolts. Select all three of those and I'm going to make them into one layer by merging the layers. 
So with that, I'm going to go up and go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and around, uh, looks like around 9.5, 9, .5, 9 I'll go 9.5. I just want to blur those three lightning bolts in the back so it makes them different from the ones up here. It's almost like they're out of focus because they're a little bit farther away from the uh, camera. Alright, and that would be the finished picture right before I put my uh, watermark on it and uh, might do a little bit of touching up as far as black goes around her, ed her edges, but that's one way that I throw lightning into pictures. Awesome.